turn 30 this week, which is equal parts very exciting and very terrifying. But if we're honest, as an entrepreneur, I feel like that most of the time anyways, so we're rolling with it, <laughs> which is actually exactly why I wanted to make this video today because I wanted to go over the top 10 biggest lessons that I've learned starting two businesses before the age of 30. So if you are thinking about starting your own business or maybe you've already started your own business, I want you to know that this is 100% possible for you and help you avoid some of the mistakes I made or get you further even faster. So I'm not here trying to give you generic advice. Yes, I want you to start before you're ready, but I wanna actually give you tactical and tangible things that you can implement so that all of the lessons I've learned, you can learn from them too. Even if it's just changing the perspective that you have on whatever the issue is or the barrier that you're facing at that time. So grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. You are going to want to write all of these down, especially the last one. So if you wanna hang out, learn more about branding, marketing, and entrepreneurship, go ahead, hit subscribe, and we will grow and cultivate your dream business together. These lessons are in no particular order of importance, but they're all of the biggest lessons that I have learned over the past four years. So the first one is probably one you've heard before if you've spent any time in the entrepreneurial space, but you probably haven't heard it talked about the way I'm going to talk about it today. Start before you're ready. You're never 100% going to feel like you're ready to do most things in your business. You really just have to go for it. And you're gonna learn so much more by actually doing things than just learning about them on the front end. That is one of the mistakes that I made because I didn't want to start something and be bad at it. I didn't want to start something and it fail. So I tried to learn everything on the front end, tried to learn about how to post on Instagram, about the algorithm, how to do marketing, all of these things. But until I actually got in it, I didn't get any better at it because you can learn so much on the front end, but all of that knowledge doesn't really do anything until you actually apply it. So one of the best things that I have ever read was for every one thing you learn, apply it two to three times longer than it took you to actually learn it. So for example, if I take an Instagram course, now instead of waiting until I'm done with the entire course to implement any of the strategy, if I learn how to make a video, I'll go ahead and I'll make the video and I'll put it out there and I'll learn as I go because you're gonna learn how you work the best, what parts of those strategies work for you and your audience and what works best for your business. But until you implement them, you can't really know. So please don't get stuck in that cycle of learning new strategies, new processes, getting new coaches implement for yourself and you'll only get better. Yes, you're probably going to be bad at most things at the start, but that's okay. Most people are. And I want you to look back a year from now or two years from now and look at the work you created and be like, wow, that was so bad because that means you got so much better. I can promise you I'm going to look back on this video in one or two years and be like, wow, Leslie, that was horrible but I had to start to even get there. So start before you're ready. I hope this second lesson changes the way that you look at content creation. It made content creation for my business a hundred times easier when I started to implement this. And it's to create before you consume. It's so easy to get on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, look at what other creators are creating, looking at the content that they're putting out that people are engaging with, the things that people want to know. But we can lose so much time doing that. We can end up being on Instagram for hours or scrolling through TikTok videos and then realizing, oh my gosh, I haven't created any content for my audience today. 
and we can get so overwhelmed with all of the different ideas that we've seen and trying to implement each one and it just becomes content overwhelmed and most people that causes them to freeze and not post anything. So what I learned is to create my content before I consume any other content, whether it's for fun or for research. If I create beforehand, that means I'm creating content that's authentic to me, authentic to my brand, and it's going to set me apart from all of those other creators then you're more likely to stay consistent with your content because you're not losing any time mindlessly scrolling on everybody else's content. Lesson number three is to not make any decisions based on emotion. So as a very emotional human being, I had to learn this one the hard way, but you definitely don't want to be making business decisions when you are emotional. So even though it might not seem like it's an emotional decision, if you are tired, if you are feeling burnt out, if you're having a hard day with a client, you don't want to be making any business investments like in a new course or in a new coach, in a new strategy, or even accepting new clients that may not be the right fit for you just because you're having an emotional day. So what I would recommend, highly recommend, is implementing a strategy in place for making decisions. You can create your own business flowchart on how to make strategic decisions, or you could have specific numbers that you track to decide if you're continuing with a certain marketing strategy, or if a certain coach is actually paying off. So those things you want to decide from more of a strategic point of view than an emotional one, and it will save you a lot of trouble. And speaking of emotion, lesson four is be scared and do it anyways. Most of the things that you do as an entrepreneur are going to be scary. You're going to be doing a lot of things for the very first time. You're going to be constantly learning new things and facing new challenges. So it's okay to be scared, but take the action anyways. And the number one thing that helped me break through that fear and actually helped me starting to take action was to think of what I'm doing from a place of service instead of just thinking about myself. So whether it's not wanting to make a video one day, not wanting to create a whole new program out of the fear of judgment or the fear of failure or the fear of what could happen next. Instead, I like to think about it as how could this information help the person on the other side? How could this change somebody else's life? And then it takes the fear out of it and the gratitude for what I know and what I'm able to provide for other people. So it takes my ego out of it and it opens up to new possibilities. So yes, I do more things scared every day than I probably do not scared. And it's been so worth it. And the funny thing is most of the resistance, most of the fear, most of the struggle that we face as an entrepreneur is honestly the way we are thinking about it. So this lesson was one that I had to get very honest with myself about and realize that a lot of the problems and challenges I was having in my business were because of the way that I was thinking about them. And if I could change my perspective or I could get the perspective from somebody else on what they saw as the issue, that opened me up to so many different possibilities and <laughs> way less barriers. So if you ever feel stuck, if you ever feel like there's something in your business that is just a huge struggle, try to step back and see if there are other possibilities, if there are other perspectives that you can look at that you might not see while you're in it. And if you can't see any for yourself, try and find a close friend or a coach, somebody who can help you see a different perspective because there's always a solution to a problem and you don't always have to be struggling. Lesson six is to always work backwards from the result that you want to create. So whether it's a whole entire program or the business that you want to create, 
or a single piece of content. If you work backwards from the ultimate goal or result that you want to create for somebody else, it's going to make the whole process of creating the program or creating the content, creating the marketing, everything so much more simple, straightforward, and streamlined so that you don't get lost, you don't have any extra filler, and everything has its purpose in its place. So if you don't wanna get lost, if you don't wanna get confused, always work backwards. Lesson seven is there are going to be times to grind and there are going to be times to rest. Now, there's a lot of different versions of entrepreneurship going on on social media where you see people traveling all the time and look like they barely work. And then you have the people who grind all the time and brag about how much they work and they never take a break. There's a balance between the two. But yes, at the beginning, there are times where you're going to have to work hard to set things up so that they work in a process. Creating a business is hard work and you're going to have to grind for a little bit to get it set up in a way that helps you to be able to relax and rest and reap the rewards of all of that hard work down the line if you set it up correctly. So just know there will be times of hard work and grinding, but there will also be time for rest and you should definitely take that time for rest. Lesson nine is easy to say, but unfortunately it's hard for a lot of entrepreneurs to find, which is to surround yourself with people who believe in your ability to succeed. There are a lot of ups and a lot of downs in entrepreneurship and you need somebody there to ride the roller coaster with you for those days where you just feel like you want to give up or you're having challenge after challenge or just even have a little shadow of a doubt in yourself. Having one person there to believe in you or tell you you can is everything throughout the journey. So if you don't have that people in your friends or family, try and find a group of entrepreneurs that can help you or hey, even reach out to me and I would love to support you on your journey because it's a hard one and you should never have to do it alone. And lesson 10, the most important lesson is to don't take yourself too seriously and be authentically you. And I know being authentic is very much a buzzword in the entrepreneur space right now, but people buy from people. And I know with the fear of judgment and the fear of failure, putting yourself out there, the true person who you are, can be so scary. But when you can truly be you, it makes your business feel so much better and you attract the people who you would really like to work with because they see the real you. And yeah, some people aren't gonna like you, but that's okay, those aren't the people you wanna work with anyways. So to build a business and a brand that you really love, be yourself, be your true you. Don't take it too seriously. We all say silly things, we all make mistakes. We're going to learn and grow as we build a business at the same time. So as long as you're true to you, everything will always work out. So drop in the comments what lesson stood out to you the most or which one is challenging you the most and me and this community can help support you on getting through it. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos to grow and cultivate a brand that you love.